Hey team, we're going to learn how to use headless WordPress in Next.js with WP GraphQL and Apollo client. I'm Colby Fayok. And if this is your first time over at Eric's channel, make sure you hit subscribe with the link below and make sure you head over to my channel and subscribe at Colby Fayok. If you've been around the web for a while, you're probably already familiar with WordPress, but it's a content management solution that allows a lot of people to be able to edit their content on their site live and also see those changes right as soon as they're made. While that sounds pretty great, the front end is coupled to the back end or the CMS, so you can't actually do as much as you might want to, or instead you have to have a common middle layer using PHP in order to coordinate any of those changes. While WordPress actually already has a REST API that we can use, we want to use something a little bit more modern, something that's going to make our lives easier when making those queries. So we're going to use WP GraphQL, which gives us the power of GraphQL to be able to query all of our WordPress data. And to do that, we're going to use the Apollo client, which is an easy to use library where we can write our queries right inside of our application and make sure everything's coming in just as expected straight from WordPress. So I'm going to start off with this pretty basic starter of an example of WordPress where I have some data that I loaded in, particularly from fillerama.io, but it's really just a way to show that I have some content in here and I don't really have any special things going on. Particularly, I don't have any plugins that I'm currently using. But like I said, we want to use WP GraphQL. So the way that we can add that is we first go up to this add new button where we're going to actually search for WP GraphQL right inside of the search there. And we're going to go ahead and install that. And as soon as it's finished installing, we're also going to activate it. But we can see that as soon as this page loads, we now have this new setting at the side of the page for GraphQL. If I head over there and I select the graphical IDE, we can see that we have this Explorer interface where we're going to be able to start playing around with our data. Particularly, if I look in this side column, these are all the different types that I can actually query for. And if we look in something like posts, where I go into the edges and the node, we can see where we can find things like our title, our URI, and we can even grab our content, but let's first see what this query looks like. We can see that we have all of my post data right here, along with the URI that I'll be able to use right inside of my application. And similarly, if I select the etcert, and maybe even if I want to actually grab the content, I can grab those right inside of that query and I have them available right inside of this response. So our goal is going to be just that. We're gonna make a query to the same data set for our WordPress instance, and we're gonna show a list of the available posts that we have right on the side of our Next.js homepage. So to get started, we're gonna use Create Next App, which is an easy way to bootstrap a new Next.js application. If this is your first time hearing of Next.js, it's a React framework that gives us a lot of powerful features right out of the box, including things like page routing and static compilation. So to get started, I'm gonna copy this command where particularly I'm gonna use yarn and I'm gonna paste this right inside of my terminal and I'm gonna also specify the folder that I want and the project name of it, where I'm gonna say my next WP app. And what that's going to do is it's going to fetch the default starting template straight from Next.js and it's also going to clone that down into our file system and also install all the dependencies so we don't have to do any of that ourselves. But we can see once that's done, we can CD now into that directory and we can even run yarn dev or npm run dev. And what that's gonna do is it's going to spin up a new local development server where we're going to be able to open this up and we're gonna see our brand new Next.js application with the starter template that comes straight from Next.js, which we can see right here. Now the cool thing with Next.js is once you start looking at it inside of your text editor, you can see that we get a lot of things by default out of the box, and it's just enough to help keep you productive, but not enough where you're going to have to remove a bunch of stuff so that you have to clean up before you actually get started. But particularly, we're going to take advantage of this index.js file or the homepage that's already here, and we're going to just replace some of the code in here just so we can see what it's like to actually make a query to our WordPress using WP GraphQL and actually being able to display it on the page. So the great thing is the Apollo client docs makes this really easy for us to get started. So starting with the setup, we're going to install these two dependencies where of course we want the Apollo client itself, but we also want to use the GraphQL package, which, go which is going to help us be able to make and write those queries. So I'm going to copy those two things. I'm going to head over back to my terminal and I'm going to run yarn add those two package names. And keep in mind, if you're using NPM, you can copy that installation just as is. But the important thing is that we're adding those to our project. 
Now for our purposes, to make it easier for you following along at home, we're going to follow along just right with these docs and we're gonna be able to import and use the same snippets that we have here. But keep in mind, these are things that as you get more familiar, you can create your own mechanisms so that you can more easily access them throughout your application. But to start, let's import all these different components inside of our index.js file, which if we go to the top of that index.js, we can paste that right below our imports that already exist. Keep in mind with Next.js, I tend to import all my packages before the styles, just in case those packages themselves have their own styles they wanna apply, such as components. But the important thing here is we wanna get in the Apollo client, the in-memory cache, and we don't necessarily need to use these two for our example, but they're helpful to have in case you wanna use them in the client. Now, the next step is actually configuring our client. If we look at the snippet here, we need to do one thing particularly where we're going to create a new Apollo client and we're gonna pass in the URI of the host that we're going to hit for our data. That's gonna be our WordPress instance. But then we're also passing in this caching mechanism that just makes it a little bit more performant when we're working and building these different files. Now, like I just mentioned, you have the ability to use this on the client, particularly with the use query hook, where you can do that client side and make any requests you want to that GraphQL API. But we're going to take advantage of something called get static props from Next.js, which is going to allow us to query for that data at build time. That way we don't have to make that request on the client and impact the user's experience. So at the bottom of the page, we're going to export a new async function called get static props, which we're also going to return a new object that has a property of props, which this is going to correlate with the component that gets created for our homepage, where these props are going to get passed in as an object that just like any other React application or component, we're going to be able to use. But now I'm going to copy this client snippet and I'm going to paste it right into my get static props function. And as we can see here, there's one thing that we all really need to change where it's going to be this endpoint. As of course, we're not going to be querying code sandbox. We want to query our own endpoint. When using WordPress and WP GraphQL, our endpoint by default is going to be our base WordPress installation address. Basically the space jelly demo WP engine.com where you can see currently we're on WP slash admin, but we're going to take this base domain and we're going to go to slash GraphQL, where if we try to look at that in the browser, we can test that it's working, but of course it's not going to actually work as a browser get request. But that said, we can see that it's doing something GraphQL related, and we're going to take that and we're going to paste it right into this URI property inside of our client initialization. But now with that, we have our client and we can actually make our query. Now we're going to change this up a little bit, but let's copy this client query right into our project underneath the client. I'm gonna make this go out a little bit, but we can see that we're taking this client, we're making a query with this particular GraphQL query, and then we're gonna grab those results. But because we're in an async function, we wanna make this a little bit easier on ourselves where we're gonna use async await syntax. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna say constant response equals await client query. I'm gonna bring this back in a little bit. But now we can see there's only one thing that we need to change here and this it's this query as this doesn't make sense for us this was part of the example now the cool thing is if we come back over to the graphical editor explorer we can copy this query exactly as it is head back over to our project and paste this right into that gql string and now to see that this works i'm going to console log out that response object so we can see that what we're actually getting now, if I reload the page here, we can see that I'm actually not able to see that log inside of my web console. Now, the trick is with using the get static props or any of the other data fetching function methods like this for Next.js, they're actually running on node at build time. So if we head over to our terminal, we can see that we're now seeing that response object along with the data and the posts, which is going to be all that GraphQL data that we just queried for. So we're going to grab those posts by writing constant posts equals response dot data dot posts, which we can see back in the terminal here. But under this post property, we can see back over in WordPress itself that we're going to be accessing the posts, the edges and the node. So we want essentially all this data inside the node. So back inside of our code, we can say response data posts and for the edges and for each of those, we're going to map through those 
and we're gonna grab that node and we're gonna simply return it so that what we end up here is an array of all of our post data. Again, we can test this out by console logging out all of our posts. Where now if we look back in the terminal, we can already see all that content. And if we scroll up enough, we can see the things like the title and the URI along with the excerpt. So now I'm gonna take those posts and I'm gonna pass them right through as a prop from this function returning out. And that's going to make it available again to this home component where we're gonna be able to access it. And we can test that out by adding yet again another console log. But this time, this is going to be running in the browser because we're running it in our React code. So now if I refresh the page, we can see that we have that post array and it has all of our post data that we're gonna be able to show on our page. Now for this demo, we're not gonna do a whole lot with this. Of course, you can go through and create a bunch of dynamic pages and do a lot of cool things with Next.js, but just for this purpose, let's see what it looks like if we wanna show all the titles instead of these cards on our page. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna actually get rid of all of these cards except for the one at the top. And I'm gonna say for all of my posts, I'm gonna map through them. And for each post, I'm gonna return or I'm gonna copy or cut this card because we're going to use it as a template for all of our posts. So for now, we don't have any real links. So I'm gonna add a hashtag instead of the href and we're gonna say our key where usually you wanna use an ID, which we can make available from WordPress, but let's just for now add post.title, but I'm gonna also take that post title and replace the H2 with it. And then I'm gonna get rid of the paragraph tag as we don't need that, as right now we're just trying to show all those titles. But now if we look back in our browser, we can see all these same titles that we got from WordPress, we're seeing as cards inside of our Next.js application. Now, like I was saying, the cool thing about Next.js is we can take this to another level where we can go through and dynamically create pages for every single one of these posts and create an entire WordPress blog or website using WP GraphQL and Next.js. And if you wanna cut directly to the easy part and actually get all this right out of the box, you can check out my Next.js WordPress starter available on GitHub where you can easily bootstrap a new headless WordPress project with Next.js, where you have all the bells and whistles, you have page support, post support, and a bunch of other awesome stuff that you would expect from a typical WordPress site. Now, without diving too deep into this project, let's just give a really quick spin up and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna copy that same yarn create command, similar like we did with the other project, where it's gonna go ahead and start actually creating, where it's going to this time clone down the starter template, but still do a similar thing, where I'm gonna name my project my other next WP app. And we can see that that clones down the starter template. It's going to also install the dependencies, just like it did when we were creating the default Next.js application. And just like before, we're going to CD into that directory. But before we run yarn dev, we can see that we have one thing that we need to do, and we need to define our GraphQL endpoint. So I'm gonna open this up inside of my code editor. I'm gonna copy over this variable where we're going to create a new environment variable. We're at the bottom and the root of the page. I'm gonna create .env.local, which is Next.js's way of creating environment files where I'm gonna paste in this WordPress GraphQL endpoint, and we're actually going to use that same endpoint that we did inside of our other project, where for me, it's spacejellydemo.wpengine.com slash GraphQL. So I'm gonna head back over to there and paste it in, but now I can go ahead and run Yarn Dev. Just like before, it's going to open up a new server, where if we give this a second to load, now in the background, it's going to be making a bunch of queries to WordPress to get as much data as it can. And you can see also in the terminal, it's creating things like open graph images, it's creating a search index, as well as an RSS feed and sitemap, but it's going to all compile those down into a Next.js application and make it Im immediately available for us to use. But once it's done, we can see we immediately have a new Next.js WordPress application, and we really didn't have to do much beyond plug in that environment variable. And we can even see that if we try to navigate to one of these post pages, we have that dynamic routing exactly like what we talked about when we were doing all this querying manually. The cool thing is we even have the page support, and we also have a search support, where if I search like no or Donbot or whatever we wanna do, it's making that search to a client-side JSON index, so it's a super fast, snappy post search. But whether you use Next.js WordPress Starter to bootstrap your new Next.js WordPress application, 
or if you do it all manually like we did in our first demo. These are all great ways where we can take advantage of the power of WordPress as a great CMS and bring that all into our managed Next.js front end to have a modern, fast web application. WordPress is king CMS for a reason. It's a really powerful editor and a lot of people already know how it works. So being able to couple that headlessly with tools like Next.js make it a really powerful solution for the modern web. What's your favorite thing about WordPress, headless WordPress, or even what's your other favorite headless CMS? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe to Eric's channel, as well as my channel over at Colby Fayok for future updates. Thanks Eric for having me on as a guest and I'll see you over at my channel at Colby Fayok. Thanks for watching.